Well, hello there. Welcome back to the Agostino's English Show, episode number 324. With me, your host, Agostino, that's 324, episode 324, tres, dos, cuatro. How you doing? How you feeling? Great, amazing. Glad to hear you guys are okay. I'm feeling, hmm, how am I going to say it? Bored out of my nuts a little bit. Um, Not with... Not with uh, life, because I think lockdown's been pretty cool. Bunch of reading, bunch of watching movies, documentaries, and all that good stuff that I enjoy. But I'm just bored with the current arguments right now, you know, in the political landscape. You know, this um, this kind of prolonged period of time spent indoors has really reminded me why I've never really got involved in politics or shown any kind of interest in getting into politics at any stage of my life because it's just so boring the debates they remind me a little bit of um the debates we used to have in school with when it came to supporting football teams there used to be this thing that people do i don't think they do it much nowadays but you know i don't necessarily get into like public debates with people about football but i remember back in the in school you'd have kids who are like teams you know kids who support different teams would be in a capable of saying anything bad or admitting if their team did anything wrong you just you just couldn't do it so if you support arsenal and you know they played Man united the other day and Vieira did some really bad challenge on roy Keane, you could never say that Vieira did a bad challenge and you go away with it you could just have to pretend like it didn't happen or that the challenge was fair or something you, regardless of how egregious it was regardless of the angles or the replay regardless of the video evidence just nothing you could not say anything bad about your own player just was not not a thing that was done and i think politics is similar in that regard because depending on what camp you're in you just can't see any bad in your party any bad in your leader um in the constituents or not in the mps or in the kind of you know the elected officials that you put in place there there's just nothing they can do any they can't do any wrong in your eyes and i just think that's really <clears throat> it really kind of hurts um it really kind of hurts your party in the, end of the day because when there is something genuine to pick out in the other party no one's going to give you any kind of grace no one's going to really understand where you're coming from because it's just going to see that you're kind of pig-headed but then on the other side of it both parties are pig-headed so it just becomes a really boring conversation really there's not much um there's not much resolutions come out of it not really policy changes you know you don't really hear that now they do whenever you turn on the tv have you ever heard of uh, politicians actually debating policies instead of just picking out um they're just kind of probbing and poking at things that the other person did wrong or they're trying to correct a narrative or they're trying to sculpt a narrative to begin with it's just a complete horror show so um I'm so this, which is why I'm kind of enjoying the protests in some regard because if you really get away from all the kind of media headlines and all the sensational clips of like you know, um, you know, uh, police officers falling off their horses, smashing into traffic lights and shit, and people beating up, you know, unsuspecting beat cops and whatever it may be, they're at the heart of it, there's loads of from what I've read in between the lines and following people's Twitter accounts, there is loads of on the gr on the ground, um, activations underground workshops underground you know whatever it may be right real person to person community to community building that they're doing out away from all the lights and cameras of the news program which is great and i guess for a news program you know recording people sitting down listening to a lecture about um i don't know how to secure a business loan whatever might not be as exciting as seeing loads of kids getting pepper sprayed um you know surrounded by police officers that look like they just came out of star wars i understand it but there is a lot of good stuff happening you just need to kind of you know wait for all the bullshit but goddamn boring but goddamn politics is boring in the same way i guess you know talking about football with some random dude you bumped into a pub is boring too because you're just gonna start you know telling you how much he hates the manager and how much he thinks if they just had an unlimited budget they'll be on top of the league again it's just such a base conversation there's no real depth to it there's no real analysis there's no real intra there's no, no introspection just you know there's no, just nothing it's just looking at it from what it is exactly and just thinking if i take this one thing away and subtract it with something else it's gonna be all rosy it's like nah that's not how it works mate but again what do i know yeah so apart from that um that's been pretty good man got a few actually i got a bunch of books i need to review i got a kind of mention on here i bought a few books for the month that i'm kind of getting through now at the moment i try to read about four just to keep rotating them you know some stuff that i think is of interest and then i'm going to share them with you guys give you some of my reviews and recommend some i've had a bit of a 
a weird relationship with the way I kind of share books. There was a period in my life where I kind of felt as if I was kind of like, you know, whacking myself off for right? a little bit of intellectual masturbation by posting the amount of books I was reading a year or, or, or posting the amount of books I was reading per month and then per year. Um, I think last year I topped out to about 57 or something. And um, it just can get a bit, you know, you know, you start to feel, it can, it can feel like you are sort of, you know, doing it just to wax your own ego, which you possibly are, but I kind of enjoy it, right? I've always, that's one of the things I've been thankful for over the years. I've kind of got a big appetite for reading. I can sit down for, you know, hours on end reading a book, however dense it may be, and I find it as enjoyable as watching something on Netflix. I can only imagine if you're somebody that don't doesn't enjoy um, reading, it probably has the opposite effect for you, but I'm thankful that I do enjoy it. And I don't know, maybe because I spent so much time sharing images of myself getting absolutely whacked right mong down my brain on weekends that i felt as if i kind of replaced those kind of that kind of content with books and articles i was reading online it would just seem a bit yeah do you know what I mean it would just seem a bit naff and if you've noticed for most people especially if you go on like i don't know let's say you go on a instagram profile of a really well-known instagram model for sure if she's into books and she you know you look at her instagram feed i bet you any image that doesn't contain her ass her tits her face will get significantly less um, engagement than you know it's just one of those things which is unfortunate really because you'd hope that you know if you're said instagram model you'd hope to use your platform to kind of promote one thing right which might be the surface level side of you and then once you kind of get people through the door you kind of hit them over the head of a book right you'd hope that would work but it doesn't work that way unfortunately if people come to you because of your tits and your ass you just have to keep showing them more tits and ass and if you cover it up those motherfuckers are gonna go unforge so um i guess maybe my brand was you know going out getting high um, so when I suddenly tried to like change or when I started to evolve and I, let, I wanted my social media presence to reflect that, unfortunately, my fans weren't really receptive to it, which is okay, isn't it? It is what it is, isn't it? What can you do? But anyway, apart from that, let's get in on some topics, some things that I've read that I thought of interest for you guys. Um, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. So number one, what's wrong with people here on Twitter featured? Let's get into this was the first topic that I thought would be of note to help out. Buddy, 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 bar. The, the, the load up the screen. Here it goes. How it all starts. Okay, cool. This is pretty funny. So this is, um, is this a, would you say this is a consequence? This could be a consequence of the prolonged period of time we spent indoors, right? But I, I can't be the only one that's noticed the, you know the real uptick in karen videos online now i'm not too sure if this is a case of us being indoors for longer so you know some people just respond weirdly to it they're just a bit like oh i can't handle this anymore um and they just freak out or when they do go out because they're so you know because i think a lot of people as much as they want to say they're in the kind of i believe it's fake you know this is covid19 fake or i believe it's like the plague and if i go outside i'm gonna die i think it's both i think most human beings occupy both mindsets they think the same things that they think two things at the same time so i think that might have led to this explosion in karens right but if you're like i'd imagine most karens are like what over 45 they've got a couple of kids if they're lucky enough they might have a couple of grandkids so it's only natural that they'd be a bit you know on on edge that when they go outside because they 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 don't know if they're either going to get covid from just some random alien right some random illegal immigrant or if they're going to be unnecessarily you know subjugated to some sort of like you know a public freak out argument thing or it could be just the fact that maybe these kind of videos existed beforehand but we never had a term to kind of refer them to to a, a term to refer to them as that could be a thing but i've just seen a real big rise in these videos of these middle-aged or you know maybe a bit older than middle-aged white women usually a bit sexless you know that kind of sexless human being that looks like they just don't enjoy being touched at all regardless if it's by the, the only the only person they care for is their little cat or dog um they seem to have an inability to argue with adults it just always goes to like 
it goes from zero to a hundred. There's no argument. You know, usually when like you have an argument, you know, usually if you're in a shop somewhere, and a woman kind of bumps you with a trolley, or somebody barges into you, or a kid steps on your foot. I don't know. There's usually kind of like a a beginning. There's usually kind of like a start to that kind of discourse or communication. If you're somebody that does that, right? You don't usually go, "Wait, what the fuck, you little shit?" Right? You kind of kind of ah. Oh. The parent maybe looks at you, then you go, "Hey." could you maybe you know and then you have that kind of little weird adult sort of talk and then they might apologize or they might tell you to fuck off but there's always a little start there's always a kind of a dance to it first you don't just go straight to the you know expletives and the you know cussing people out and telling them to go back to their country you don't usually do that right <laughs> i'd imagine it's usually kind of usually save the going but go back to your country you know suck your mum, all that sort of stuff you usually say that to the end because those are the nice juicy bits that you hope is going to really sting somebody you don't give them that stuff at the beginning but these karens do it all the time and i guess the other side of the karen the more malicious side is what the amy cooper did right the amy cooper woman in the grand what's that central park in america where she essentially went off the handle and then when she went off the handle she threatened to call the police on the black on the black bird watcher you know oxymoron if ever there was one um as a kind of veiled threat right if i call the police you're gonna die which is mad isn't it imagine you had like an assassin's a, you know this kind of hitman right you had a number you could call a hotline for hitmen you call them and they come down and just murk anyone you point them at <laughs> it's just like a it's like a modern day version of um what's those guys on game of thrones uh the faceless men right it's a modern day version of it right you give them a bit of money you point and then they go and kill that person instead of doing it in their own sweet precious time they do it right then at that instant so yeah, these Karens are weird, isn't it? They just never again, and I guess maybe it's because I have this weird thing where I tend to learn from my mistakes, right? I think most people are, are like that, right? You make a couple of errors and you learn from them. Sometimes you don't need to make a couple, but you know, most people. Let's say you make a couple, but if you're smart enough, you can make one and then learn from it, not do it again. You'd imagine with all the videos that exist out there, right? Because I'm sure. I'm sure on like mum's Facebooks, because I'm sure a lot of mums use Facebooks, right? They must, these videos must circulate in the same way they circulate in other platforms. Um, but generally, you know, the consensus is what it is. And if you see that Amy Cooper video of her snitching on that bird watcher, there's no way you can watch that and say, okay, she wasn't the right, she wasn't, right? If, if you don't, you know, if you get in an argument with an adult, just walk away too. But, you know, you'd hope that even on those platforms, Facebook, wherever it was, these Karens exist, that they'd be some acknowledgement that hey guys we can't freak out at people in public because people are recording us let's just be a bit you know let's mind our p's and q's but they don't they still shout and you know <laughs> and freak out and lose their mind to our entertainment of course as viewers but it's just a bit sad really because you know exactly what's going to happen in it that person's going to get doxxed they're going to find out where they live they're going to find out where they work they're going to find out who's closest to them they're going to ring all those places get them fired from their job they're going to have to do a sorry apology it's just it's just going to ruin them as a person right i'm sure family members that didn't know they were like that are going to see that video and be like oh my god on karen is wiling we're not going to talk to her anymore she's off the thanksgiving list and stuff and you know how americans love thanksgiving it's just a complete shit show i feel kind of bad for them in that regard i have some compassion but god damn this video is funny so this is a new one this lady's in the park i guess doing some steps you know running on the, running on the steps doing some little you know side to side motion shit um the karen comes i guess she's annoyed that people are doing that anyway because I, I guess that lady isn't the, the trigger for it she's probably seen people doing it again and again in that area so this is the final thing that kind of the shoulder breaks the camel's back she kind of walks aggressively up the stairs in the first place the woman doesn't really notice her and then <laughs> in a final show of defiance she walks back down the same stairs again but brushes purposely really close um by the asian lady that's sort of like you know doing the steps and then they get into some sort of back and forth and it just from there it just goes to a whole another place but god bless that asian lady the, the lady has been subjected to the, to the abuse she keeps herself very zen and very calm i guess it's because she's exercising so she's kind of used up a lot of her her, her adrenaline she's probably been a, she's been a, she's in a bit of a zen state there's no, she's just looking at her like huh this is interesting so this is the video this is from twitter i'll show it to you now it says here how it all started There she goes up the stairs and there's obviously like a, a dress code for karens in it right it's always just like nondescript and it's not, again not to be mean you know the weight thing is not really an issue it's just a kind of maybe it's the giving up of in life in it they've just given up they just don't care anymore i'm done you know 
there's no effort to you know those her legs are like probably see-through paper not seen sun in years they're probably not moisturized she's got the you know some awful walking shoes that have, are comfortable that probably got a million insoles on them because she refuses to do the necessary work that her you know physiotherapist tells her to do at home so she has to insert you know layers upon layers of fucking inserts into her shoes to make them walkable like you know hand-me-down shorts hand-me-down shirts that probably she's had those items for like 27 years the only nice thing she bought herself is maybe a pair of glasses or some headphones but it's just a complete it's funny that how that kind of outside exterior right the lack of care that you take in your body or in your clothing will somehow kind of um reflect in how you know disgusting and really vile your personality is right to kind of cause an argument in this scenario because most of the times these kind of public debates or these public sorry these public confrontations they have some level of validity to them right someone did something wrong to you or you feel agreed then you have some sort of you know argument but this is just like a nothing thing isn't it like a woman's doing some exercise on the stairs and this somehow this goes into an argument it's impossible for an argument to, to exist in this scenario but it does it continues she's still on the steps the woman comes back down in a minute let's see her coming to frame <laughs> I love it. I love it. Here she goes. Jesus. And then we get the second frame, which is this. This, this is obviously the best part of it. Let's see it. Part two. No, where's the argument? Oh, where are you? There you go. Here anymore, okay? <laughs> Next time you ever talk to me like that, you're gonna get your ass kicked by my family. They're gonna fuck you up. I'm I'm glad she said get your ass kicked by my family because I, when I first watched it, I was like, hold on, you, you, does she think she's gonna kick the woman that's exercising? I don't know, whatever time in the morning that is on the stairs on her own, doing these little flat kicks and I don't flat kicks, but you know, doing a little step up on the stairs. You probably not. You know, that lady could probably run rings around her and I wouldn't get tired and probably start crying on the floor. But I fucked up by my family. What Her whole family's going to come down and beat her up. That's a bit mad, isn't it? <laughs> what did That's I do? Right. They're going to fuck you Why? up. Why? What did I do? Because you are an asshole. Look at the whole <laughs> stairs to yourself. You had these Why don't you and go somewhere stairs? else where you can go to a gym? This is not just for you. That is quite an accurate example. It's quite an accurate thing to be upset about, right? If you're a regular civilian, you're seeing somebody taking up the whole set, set of stairs and then you want to walk down them and you have to kind of go around another way. That's one thing. But usually, most of the time, if someone's exercising in a kind of a public pathway somewhere, if you're a sensible adult, just saying, excuse me, I'm going to walk down the stairs. Do you mind if you probably stop for a bit if they're maybe throwing a ball around or they've got a kettlebell in their hand and you're a bit worried about it, it's, you know, slipping out their fingers and hitting you inside their head? Usually people are quite accommodating. They'd be like, yeah, no problem. Just give me a second and they, you know, move their stuff around and you can walk by. It's not that big of a deal, really, if you think about it. But I guess in her in her world, just having to worry about it is already an inconvenience. Just having to think about talking to somebody that isn't her friend or that isn't her husband or isn't her cat is already going to drive her over the hill. Oh, you Get the to... fuck out of this world! Get the fuck out of this state! Go back to whatever fucking Asian country you belong in! I like how she lowered her voice there. Go back to every Asian country. Like that was, gonna, that was the insult I was going to get that woman. Go back to every Asian country. Okay, you racist. You fucking bitch! This is not your place! This is not your home! We do not want you here! That's really good again, isn't it? Just the repeating, this is not your place, not your home, we do not want you here. Just to cause some real pain. But again, it's just like, God damn it. From the point of, she has a point in one aspect, right? And then you completely lose it when you start just insulting people like this. Like, what do you expect? What, what, what's the solution here? And the point, and the thing that I hate about these sort of confrontations, and I've, I've had a few of them like this, where you try and be the bigger person and somebody just keeps, you know, bombarding you with all these mad insults <coughs> then when you get into a physical altercation you're like you know what enough's enough because that's the thing that's the only problem in these situations where women never really have any even a women and women argument it's no real threat of violence ever usually it's always just exchange you know of kind of verbal insults unless you're like on a Walter Hippo video but with men 
because there's an underlying threat of violence right if you say too much it's gonna go to the other level it can never get that far but there are some guys that out there that do exist who just you know will talk a whole bunch of shit the moment you put your hands on them they suddenly start crying you know crying a foul like what are you doing you're freaking out what's wrong with you you're going crazy look at this man eh? it's like no brother you you brought me to this point you, you 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 brought us both here you paid for my fucking oyster card and yours you put that on facebook i hope you do because every fucking person will beat the crap out of you from here on out imagine people beating you up on facebook for a video they saw that's mad isn't it that's something i've always kind of wondered what happens like um is that like a thing people seeing a video of you like imagine if you beat somebody up on facebook on, on facebook and you happen to go a bit over the top and you you know soccer kick their head into next tuesday and someone saw you and they thought oh that was unfair would well, they kind of bring that up in person and say hey yeah, by the way i saw a video of you list upload yesterday at three forty-five, and i'm just gonna i'm here to kind of enact revenge on that boy that i don't know who he is like what you ever say oh jesus to me when i want to use the stairs you little bitch <laughs> there's other stairs you are a sick that's a great reply i don't want to use the stairs you little bitch there's, uh, there's other stairs to use too but again i have sympathy with the woman in that regard i don't have to use other stairs because you're sitting there i, I guess you'd have the same sort of energy for somebody that was sitting on those stairs you know kind of you know i guess kissing their partner right or hanging out with their friends right she'd have the same sort of complaint i'm assuming you'd hope so right you'd hope it's not just some like um she's going around you know with her binoculars looking at any asian person on some set of stairs running and wanting to go and attack fucking ignorant teenager oh no thank way, you fucking what middle-aged woman <laughs> who wears black in california sun <laughs> who the fuck wears black I like the. I'm not sure if this is if this is the the point of the insult, but I like the fact that she's kind of going for the, you know, veiled crackhead insult, right? That you live in a hot country, you're wearing black because you're trying to maybe hide your, you know, your your self harming scars or you know the little needle needle marks. I don't know. I like that. Maybe that's not the point of it, but maybe I think she's insinuating it. Are you an idiot? You wear black in California sun. <laughs> 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 she walks off into the sunset she literally walks off into the sun an absolutely epic video i thought i'd just open that up with you know keep it a little bit loose and get things in a fun way because there's a lot of serious stuff happening in the world right now and it so why not make it a bit more fun let's move this camera a little bit in here there we go wish best wash so next topic let's get into that let's move away from that one a bit let's go there yeah what's next on let's see what we want to talk about Nils on friends with Bert Matthias Paul. Oh yeah, cool. That's a good one. So um I'm not too sure if you guys are interested in football, but there's a really cool interview featured now at the moment on a web uh by this guy called Flex who's one of the presenters on the United Stand and he's got a really in depth interview with Matthias Pogba, um one third of the Pogba brothers, also brother of Paul. Um, it's a really informative interview. Um, I would kind of say it from the outset that it doesn't really contain any um, news or info about Pogba himself. I think he kind of purposely strayed away from that. So if you're interested in watching an interview with him, I recommend you do check that out. Let me see if I put it up on the screen if you guys can see. Da, 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 da. Here, there we go. Here it is. So it's an interview. It's on The Flex, <coughs> his YouTube channel. I'm going to put it up here for you guys to see quickly. Let's get that on mute. But this is the this is the interview. It's featured on Flex's YouTube channel. He's again one of the well one of the presenters on United Stand. And yeah, it's a really cool interview. Um, in terms of just in featuring somebody that is a bit of a journeyman footballer, he hasn't necessarily hit the heights that Paul Pogba did in his career, but he's still a really inspirational and a probably a little bit more closer to reality story for a lot of kids coming up nowadays wanting to play football i think it's a really good um opportunity to see what it takes to become a professional and for the most part what i liked about it was that matthias really um drummed home the importance of having a really good mentality because i think he suffered a lot from injury setbacks and having to move to different countries get you know acclimated to different sort of cultures and the one thing that you can 
sort of cultivate over time no, you can cultivate a few things but something that needs to be cultivated over time in football especially when you're moving between different leagues and different countries because of managerial changes is to keep your mental um your yeah to really sharpen your the mental side of your game because again football's weird like that right there's loads of trends in terms of a play there's loads of trends in selections and training or whatever and but then there's only a few ways you can play the game you know, to your best of your ability so you might get you know if he's a let's say like a you know back into the defender back to the wall no sorry back to the goal sort of striker who likes to hold up the play and kind of switch the ball to the wings and then run into the box and wait for the crosses to come in and then you're suddenly playing for a manager that likes to play the the ball to the feet of the player or the player up front all the time and have you run through your channels. You have to really be mentally strong enough to adapt to that demand on you and to not see it as a slight on your own assets and skills. And then just in general to expectation for the fans if you have a bad game all these things are really impossible are really important but i guess that's something that he kind of drums home because no you know there's not a lot of players that are going to be born blessed with the kind of physical you know blessed with the sort of like you know innate talent to play football like Lionel messi has but if you're able to cut a, if you're able to kind of train yourself to a level to play professional football the only other thing that you need to add on top of that is a mentality because that's something that's going to get tested consistently, especially in professional football where, you know, the pundits and the media are absolutely horrible to some of the players, right? They don't give them any kind of, they don't give, spare them, um, they don't give many kind of, you know, leeway. Um, the fans especially can get really flippant or really knee-jerk depending on where you play. So you really have to make sure you're really on your P's and Q's and you can hold fast and kind of, you know, absorb yourself from that. So I think that's a really good aspect of the interview. So definitely check it out. Really cool um, little tidbits and stories about him growing up, about um, the Pogba family, um, how they get along, what they do, blah, 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 blah. And again, for English not being a second language, I think he did it really well. Um, really informative interview. So definitely give um, Flex a follow on there and check out that show. Moving on. Mm -mm -mm. What does cancelling Ian Connor do? So in the, I guess in the aftermath of the George Floyd protest, in some respects, I guess, right? Maybe that's the thing. It seems as if the black community worldwide or the black community of the diaspora, maybe the, an extension of the American culture, we're sort of um, some, or well not me, but I guess some people in that movement, um, some people that kind of, you know, place themselves at the forefront of that movement are reassessing who their heroes are. They're kind of calling out media companies and brands, right? Condé Nast at the moment is going through a whole heap of drama. So much so there's rumors circulating on on the web that supposedly, you know, um, what's her name? Not Anna Winter. Is it Anna Winter? Yeah, yeah. Anna Winter that supposedly might leave Vogue from pressure from external sources due to everything that's going on at Condé Nast with Bon Appetit and all that nonsense. So there's loads of um things happening in the works, right? But it seems as if as if like within the black community there is a concentrated effort to um, lift up the voices they want to lift up and of course try and cancel the ones that they don't want to be part of the culture because they are they aren't aiding or abetting the movement of black lives matter and in some weird way i don't know why this happened i guess the allegations against ian connor kind of reared the ugly head and if you're not familiar with it um in kind of what would you say he is a stylist right a brand a brand owner and a general kind of you know cultural socialite in that regard um, um very much affiliated with asap rocky crew and asap mob and does a whole bunch of stuff with org has his own brand had a few couple of one brand what was the brand with the funder revenge x storm right then he's kind of like moved on to doing his brand sicko does some video directing here and there and just generally you know does his thing keeps his head out, uh, for the most part um stays out of the limelight and really kind of does his own thing from what i've seen but a few years ago there were some allegations that came out about him you know potentially being a sexual predator or being somebody that might have taken advantage of some women here and there allegedly um he was never convicted i don't think for any of those cases they never went as far as some they never went as far usually as you know comments on social media but for the most part it seems as if you know where they smoke this fire right where i think it was like at the time that i last read it it might have been like you know 12 girls now it's gone up to a considerable amount and so much so they put up a petition to kind of essentially get him cancelled right and this made me wonder um 
if cancel culture is actually real because I've kind of been thinking about this a lot lately I think in the past few years maybe off the back of reading you know Mark Ronson's book or just generally being curious about what's going on in culture at the moment that I've kind of come away with it thinking especially being a big fan of Joe Rogan and what everything that he's built part of the reason why I'm a fan of Joe Rogan is because he's essentially been able to insulate himself from being cancelled because he's built his own little planet his own little ecosystem and it's a complete it's I guess it's in one way it's um <laughs> way it's similar you won't say it's similar to alex jones but you could say Alex Jones is maybe in a similar position right he probably fucked up because of the you know of the of the covington kids comments that's really he, he went probably a bit too far or whatever was in institute whatever was intimate if he said it or not but my opinion is cancel culture doesn't exist if you're a very cash cash rich right you have a lot of money you can generally ride things up because you know when you get cancelled it usually takes a hit um on your ability to make money and you have to look at louis ck being a good example he mentioned once that you know he lost i think 30 million off the back of um the allegations of him being you know a sexual predator you know during the whole me too time um and they kind of i think they cancelled his premiere of his show cancelled maybe other things he had in development tours were off the books blah 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 blah. so it cost him in the end like 30 million right so if you're cash rich you can survive being cancelled <laughs> and the other thing i think is number two the most important thing is if you've got fans if you've got one 100 i'd say to 1000 true fans fans that would buy whatever you make um go to whatever show you put on regardless what's happening in the news that's when I don't think you can get cancelled. But I think the people that have been cancelled usually in the world who you know, successfully have been, unfortunately, regular nine to fivers, I think they get cancelled quite easily. So if you're somebody that had a rapper poor and you suddenly got yourself embroiled in this extremely toxic work environment in Bonaparte, people people, your staff are calling you out as being a tyrant, as being somebody that doesn't acknowledge, you know, black and brown faces it's gonna be very difficult for you to kind of survive this because you just had a regular job it was a high paying job which is a regular job you're a regular citizen and you can't you know so you don't really probably have the cash reserves that joe rogan has or that alex jones has to kind of ride it out so i think ian connor's in the same position if you think about it you know with the brands that he's put on and the stuff that he does outside of the outside of our view right behind the scenes because a lot of a lot of money gets generated behind the scenes that you don't really have any idea about stuff that's done kind of off the books um or is done kind of you know um without any kind of credit without any kind of credit being given those are usually a big money maker so if he is as cash rich as he says he is or as he kind of purports to be and if for the most part he has a really devoted group of fans that love what he does which i think he does in terms of ian connor i find these sort of like public shamings and cancellations a bit of a waste of time and i say that only because the allegations against him are really serious so if they're sexual assault allegations are you would just think people just go to the police right and go report it um if you really want to see justice served however painful and hurtful that may be because 30 people are just way too much right to be ex uh, uh, accused of and for it to be okay you can't just ride that one out you have to kind of you can't no you're not ride it out you if you're the pe if you're the people accusing him of you can't just let him get away with that you sort of have to go to the police you'd have to hope so but you know who knows but this is a petition they put out on change.org regarding the whole issue that's bloody hell that kind of runs through it so it says Incomes rape allegations have been circulating since his rise to popularity, regardless of the brave women so they, who have come. The writing on here is weird, and regardless of the brave women who have come forward with these as evidence, the criminal justice system has failed them. Incon has still been received co signs and being able to conduct business as usual, while these women have lived to live with their sexual injustices committed by Incon and racial injustices committed by the judge, criminal justice system. That's a weird one, though, isn't it? Incon is black himself. And then they're saying they're being discriminated against because they're black again by the judicial system. That's a very weird one. But let's continue. He says, um, we are encouraging that people that co-sign him to denounce any association with him and encourage him to begin to attempt to right his wrongs that were not brought to justice through the criminal justice system. We can't allow internet personalities to be exempt from repercussions. But they are though, isn't it? That's the problem. They really are. Um, I don't think, I, again, that's why I just think it goes back to the cash rich and having fans. I look at someone like a Tanner, right? Who would have thought Tanner would have survived TanaCon? Like, like legitimately. Looking at what TanaCon descended into, the horror show that it was, you know, little teenage girls, you know, getting sunstroke, um, 
that dude going around in a Segway, just a complete horror show, but somehow she did. And why did she do that? Because she's cash rich and she has 1,000 true fans that will buy everything that she puts out, which will allow you to have some sort of career. So that isn't gonna happen. And then the bit there about his friends still co signing to denounce him, that's never gonna happen though. I think we've seen that with people in the scene, especially in streetwear. They don't really have an, a moral compass. They don't really have any kind of backbone. They just go with whatever has whatever they they just go with the wind. They just kinda of follow the clout wind really for the most part. Which is you no know, it's not a bad thing. That's how that scene kind of um that's how it's, that's how that ecosystem sort of stays alive, isn't it? by essentially kind of trading each other's clout and trading each other's networks and sort of kind of building upon that building a bigger network and then kind of putting people in position and then that kind of solidifies you da, 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 da. so it sort of works so to expect them to sort of and again the other part of it as well if they're actual friends regardless of what they think you might have done it's just a bit naive to expect them to come out and you know what diss their friend in public to get points off of random people on the internet that's not something that someone's ever going to do so um if anything like i said if you really want change go to the police but uh, you know I'm, I'm sure trying to get somebody convicted of rape after the fact is probably a lot harder but that's the only solution that you do have if you really want that to get sorted and will that happen anytime soon probably not especially with the stuff going on in the world now is this the most opportunistic time to do that maybe it is because everyone's at home and they're paying attention to it i don't know um so this is only the beginning it says continues here we are currently working on a civil lawsuit we will not be discussing this case publicly in the hopes to keep the victims safe and to ensure a fair trial as the defendant has already made threatening statements okay this is pretty i guess it's pretty um self-evident there it says we also would like to address the people who will attempt to deny the reality of the situation with responses to common remarks made in regards to Ian Connors criminal justice they say here where's the proof they said they have over 30 women have come forward both privately and publicly some in ways that do some in ways that do not initially address his name this is not normal this isn't normal and shouldn't be normalized to believe that over 30 women should have their stories dismissed yeah that's a bit in it that's like the Russell Simmons stuff in it you hate to believe it but when it's women in double digits and then you're oddly enough having to move to Bali, it just looks a bit weird, isn't it? But then I guess on the other side of it, if you legitimately think you're innocent and you do get proven to be innocent or the girls may be, I don't know, what happens to the people that accused you and dragged your name through the mud? This no one re That's the problem with these sort of allegations. No one wins, isn't it? I guess even if the women do get compensated monetarily for something horrific that happened to them, it's not as if that's going to wash away anything that happened to them in that instance, right? That kind of being um, being defiled in that way, you're not going to get any kind of satisfaction because you took that person's, you know, bank account away from them. And the person being accused from it about, about that thing is also going to have their life destroyed. So it's a complete horror show, really, in all ways. So maybe that's why it should be handled with a degree of sensitivity. It should maybe be handled off the internet a little bit. I'm not really a fan of this stuff. I guess they're trying to do it maybe to bring attention to the uh, whole issue, but they, there was a lot of articles about Ian Connor before when these articles got when it, when the first allegations came about. You don't need to do this now. You can just go down the legal route and do it the right way. But hey, what do I know? It continues here. It says for those that are looking for evidence in order to believe the over thirty women that have come forward, please refer to one of the public court documents that has already been filed against the defendant. For sexual battery below by Milika Anderson. The document has been provided by the Black County. Oh, Jesus. Okay, there's too many details there about legal stuff, but that's one part. And then I guess he sort of responded to the allegations in some roundabout way via some Instagram video featuring a really nice sample or featuring a little leaked version of a Playboy Carter track that hasn't come out yet. I think at the moment. Let's see if I can find it. I'm watching it the other day. Um, he's kind of tweeted about it since, da, da, da. but yeah, this is the video where he sort of kind of addresses it, I guess, in some way, shape, or form. Let's quickly watch that. Da, 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 da.
I guess he's boasting about the fact that he bought the car outright, pink slips, right? Something about that. And I guess it's a Ferrari, I guess, in some There you go. That's the basic answer to questions, isn't it? About not being cancelled. Um, if you long as you've got money. And I guess, again, if you're not worried, because he doesn't strike me as somebody that's very, that cares a lot about having industry friends. If you look at his Instagram, he's always hanging out in the hood somewhere in Atlanta. You know, he's always hanging around with, like, you know, uh very uh what do you see? you'd probably refer to them as street rappers in that regard right he doesn't necessarily hang out with all the kind of fashion world glitterati who might kind of shun him and be a little bit you know uh, standoffish he tries to keep he tries to place himself with the people as they say in america so if you're doing that and you're minding your business and you're stacking your money and somebody is um accusing you of such heinous crimes you probably would sleep easy knowing that you know regardless what happens you still got the money you know he he went to prison for a year didn't he on a gun charge and came out pretty well so he's probably got enough money to withstand any kind of you know threat and he's probably aware as well that you know it's probably not going to go as far as it should do because why didn't it go as far as it did previously I guess you know some of the girls probably backed out they didn't want to put themselves in the public because it must be difficult right when you're accusing somebody of such a heinous crime and then you're wanting to you have to go through giving evidence and going to court it's not the most enjoyable of experiences so he probably might be just really confident that this is not going to go any further or that he just didn't do anything wrong i don't know uh, if obviously if i was his lawyer i probably wouldn't advise doing this but hey what do i know now showing us a, a chrome hearts big dazzle jewelry piece i guess that he got made custom no glass stupid <laughs> yeah all these dd cat bad rap niggas rentals i don't knock no leases that's smart that's my first car i had to buy it had to flat out own it had to own it just like everything else in my life bro I'm, le I'm leaving this shit to my family. Raven and Michaela get out of there. Capo get this. Capo get this when I die. That ain't Lee Steven. That ain't Lee Steven. That's owned. That's owned. Black owned. Support black owned cars. <laughs> oh, I guess let's put black owned cars. Let him do what he wants to do in it. I guess let's see what happens. Maybe there'll be some developments. Maybe he'll learn from it. Maybe he'll grow. We don't know. We don't know. Let's move on. Let's continue here. We have a really inspiring story about Samuel Ross doing a 25k grant split between some um, black owned businesses. That's a really wholesome story here to feature. Let me put this up here on the screen. This is by Vogue magazine. Um, this is probably the complete opposites of the whole two Virgil fiasco that happened a couple of weeks ago or last week actually in internet time. Oh, that was hilarious, wasn't it? So this is from Vogue. It says Sammy Ross of a Cold War takes swift and inspiring action to support black owned businesses. It says here, it says, in the wake of the international protest sparked by the census and unjust death of George Floyd, many fashion brands have been slow to act out for meaningful support. In the absence of statements from big players, a wave of small independent labels is paving the way for an anti-racist industry, for an anti-racist industry with a focus on raising up others. Central to this vital movement uh, forward is Samuel Ross of a Cold War. It's funny to call yourself anti-racist, isn't it? Does anyone refer to yourself as anti-racist, really and truly? Like, you're just not a racist, or you are, innit? You can't be anti-racist. That's such a weird word. Um, and it continues. Um, on the 3rd of June, Ross announced via Instagram that he was pledging 25000 to support black-owned businesses across 20, 10 individual grants, along with 10000 donations to Black Lives Matter. 72 hours and over 750 applicants later, wow, Ross has selected the recipients from a range of industries, including tech, education, urban planning, agriculture, and food, as well as retail. His team read every submission letter. That's amazing. So, again, 
and I guess that's the difference when you look at somebody again not to compare because this is not the time I understand it but just um there is a maybe it's intent maybe it's kind of you know uh maybe it's intent maybe it's also the idea that some people are just more in tune with what's going on in the world right you can't maybe begrudge Virgil for being a little bit out of touch because essentially you know he's at the top of the mountain right he's somewhere in Paris somewhere designing the collection for like 2025 20, right at this current moment so maybe he, he'll be forgiven for being a little bit out of touch of what black twitter is doing he probably doesn't even know what black twitter is i'd imagine for that regard not not because he's not black because he's just not you know on social as much as we would as much as probably me, you and you or i so i guess if you're a smaller brand and you're maybe you know you have interns who are a bit younger you have interns who are probably of the culture you're specifically kind of placing yourself as a kind of a black owned business which i think sammy ross has sort of done in a clever way without actually shouting about it he's actually been very clever of how he's moved around to pe the pitch he puts out the models he uses um the lookbooks how they put together there is a very concentrated effort for him to always remind the public that this is owned by a black man and he's going to keep pushing black voices um black aesthetic all this sort of stuff so um i guess he was a little bit more in tune uh, and aware of what was needed right in this moment and it wasn't just like you know nonsense donations given to any tom dick and harry it was kind of actual change right people what the, what do you call them you called agents of change in that regard right people are actually on the ground doing things and giving them a boost right um amplifying their signal retweeting them sharing their stuff on on your instagram stories and this is a really good extension of it right getting twenty five thousand and splitting it evenly between 10 people working in 10 different industries um uh, who are already working and doing the work and kind of propping up what they're doing is a really really good look and so deftly and so kind of um expertly done it's a screenshot from him on his instagram page that says directive compound resources it says my heart and soul is with our brothers and sisters in the usa i'm with you in solidarity and in spirit as a global people continue to donate economic support will assist in expediting the compound and resources tangible change this is an extremely urgent call it's not a forum for discussion nor a moment for inflamed rhetoric or lucid mantras you must understand the gravitas of such traumatic realities do not remain sad and remain focused linking but i definitely agree with that this is a time for a real <coughs> active change but again i think it's happening anyway i think from stuff i've read online if you get away from all the media jug all the media bullshit and all the sensational headlines and the pictures of police officers with you know wounds on their heads or police officers falling off horses and shit for the most part these posts have been quite peaceful there's a lot of there's a lot of workshops a lot of people actually inspiring a lot of people giving people directions on what to do next um loads of really good meetings of the minds intergenerational kind of passing of wisdom all those sort of good things that are going to act real change on the other side of the thing and i'm sure people outside of those protests are also doing those actions but i like that he's kind of emphasizing it um on his platform da, da, da. he says here uh, following he says we received no overwhelming response he says ross says via zoom my primary thought process is collating the grant list was to understand the struggles businesses are facing in different industries and to look at which fields are disproportionately unrepresented historically he believed have fashion music and sport have been considered industries for people of color succeeding yet black bodies are commodified and sexualized by the media this is a lot to do with the stereotyping and racial purifying there are so many nuances around black blackness and around our modernity this is another screenshot it says defend and support by any means necessary black liberation families business and support action the grants for independent black business is 25,000 as 10 individual grants 2.5k each awesome two action two black lives matter financial aid 10 grand for our people on the front line that is amazing and it just clear and to the point again a, a complete contrast of what Virgil did and again I think you can't i guess you can't do both things right you can't be both boastful about what you're doing in public and then also be doing things in public and i mean doing things in silence behind the scenes you're just gonna have to either put your money up and shut up or just not talk about it at all and just be all about the action and i guess maybe virgil unfortunately fell in you know right in the middle as you know maybe it's quite um on brand with his off-white name unfortunately and he was maybe unfortunate too that he was you know the first person within that kind of bubble to react to everything that was going on in the shops he probably should have put his phone down when all the looting was happening 
and it was kind of just a, a victim of all that kind of first week sort of anger and vitriol that was just on the internet and he kind of got the brunt of it don't get me wrong he was still he was still stupid of what he did and now he's on some sort of you know re reclaim his blackness redemption tour posting everything on his instagram stories that he done with black artists and collaborators which he doesn't need to do because you know the evidence is there but <sighs> I like how tactful and tasteful Samuel Ross did it. And again, I think the people that received the grants are going to be very, very thankful for, and again, a screenshot of the, of the donation, which he didn't need to do, but again, just to put the record, just set the record straight. It continues here. This article from Vogue says, Ross was inspired by the forward thinking attitude and agility um, with which the applicants had worked on to not just survive, but to thrive in the turmoil caused by COVID-19 pandemic. It says 75% of the grant recipients who range from the age of 25 to 35 have been running their companies for 18 months or longer. We highlighted businesses which are excelling in ideation and reinvented or bringing a newness to their respective industries. I like that. So it wasn't just like, it wasn't new startups that haven't just, haven't done any business, haven't got any money and I haven't had any traction it's actually people doing the work which is again it's a very I guess it must be hard to decide or in that kind of with the, about that kind of criteria right because there might be some great ideas in theory that have been kind of fleshed out by some kids but they haven't really necessarily been tested um, on the open market and I guess the only way to really just find out if you're cut out for it is to really put some skin in the game and you know put your money up or your mouth is you know going back to what Nassim Taleb sort of speaks about right getting some real skin in the game is really putting your money where your mouth is saving up some capital and actually try testing and trialing your idea in the open market and then when you kind of hit a stumbling block that's when you go and get a loan or you get those grants to help you out you know to kind of give you some breathing room but I like what they did, man. I really do like the idea that, you know, those over 750, you know, different businesses across the UK, or across the world, um, black owned that were working in all these different fields. I thought, you know, that are out there doing God's work and who, who knows what might, they may do with that list afterwards. That could be a good archive, a good sort of like um, direction for people to um, go on to, if they want to maybe reach out to black owned businesses to do a certain project that could be really cool. It continues here. It says Jermaine Craig, for example, has created a digital village built on a reliable and empowering system for black communities. His Quanda platform can mobilize fundraising to help people across the world via Slack, be it brought, be it through food support or coding initiatives. That's amazing. Um, Hasim Mohammed, is that his name? Hasima, Hasima Mohammed. Um, meanwhile, has brought a new sensitivity to the male beauty sphere through his Swedish perfume brand entitled Uniform, which was founded in the stairwells of a Stockholm council estate. Another exceptional creative, Michael Omotosho, Omotoso, um, of Plugpo, of Plug Plugle builds industrial household appliances with light and energy solutions embedded in them. Michael's a great example of a black designer coming forward outside of fashion and streetwear. Yeah, that's that's true. Because I'm sure he had in, he was inundated with brands, right? Which, you know, it's a bit uh it's a bit boring. Everyone's doing that. But to have a person to have a guy that's actually making homeware appliances, that's where the real sort of um uh, next touch point is right kind of elevating those voices um is the next way to go because you'd hope these protests will kind of yield that right there's going to be people who are going to lean into the racial grift right the sean kings of the world are going to perpetuate this idea that you know there are tyrant they're kind of bands of you know kkk members out there kind of slinging people or lynching people up left right and center but the actual real there's going to be some people that are going to be pushing for real actionable change and that the only way to do one of the best ways to do so is to prop up people within the black community who are doing things outside of the norm outside of kind of like you know the outside of our kind of set conventions and um hopefully allowing the them to be an example for the next generation so they can think oh cool i can do something else similar to such thing right not just start a t-shirt brand i can also do a homeware appliances i can also maybe do some furniture whatever it may be it continues here it says the health crisis has amplified and intensified the financial pressure weighing on each business on the founder's shoulder. Many says Ross were in the cusp of lease signing leases on their first doors. Oh, damn, it had to pivot to online service based businesses, but maintains Ross. They are entrepreneurs, so it's exciting to watch them grow. That's one of them. That's that um, Hussein Mohammed from Uniform. It says Ross, who says he's been severely disappointed by the fashion industry's response to Black Lives Matter. Oh, haven't we all, mate? 
movement has spent two and a half years outlining what black capitalism looks like and what compound resources look like with his friends. The grant, he says, is the first step to ensure economic growth within a black community, particularly in Britain, where the Brixton and Bourne Zion is based. Although 25% of the applicants were from North America, then Ross, who will work to compound resources and build layers of support driven by emphatic understanding. It has to be community driven, he believes. 100% agree with that. His number image of the girl called Christina uh what 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 how do you pronounce that and what bugo and what bugo of ine and ore lovely picture i love her earrings actually it continues here it says on how fashion and musk can work to continue sorry to become truly inclusive ross says talent must be procured and nurtured before the stage when students enroll in schools such as Central Martins. He said it shouldn't be an industry hidden from the black community, he says. Ross, who didn't think fashion was a viable career option for him when he was growing up, said next generation must be given time, must be given the time of day and skills to succeed. That's very true. I can't speak for myself going to Central St. Martins. Well, wasn't necessarily the best place for uh, black expression. Um, there was a real need I guess because most of these universities, even the ones in the UK, um, rely heavily on the influx of international students and the money they bring, <coughs> they kind of steer away from. Uh, they kind of steer away from or don't really encourage um people who are indigenous to the country who maybe you know come from different sort of backgrounds to sort of push their voices forward. There is a maybe more of a uniformity in terms of how you express yourself and um how you present your ideas which can be a bit annoying um as probably it's probably a bit different now because they're all underneath that ual umbrella and they've got that amazing new campus and king's cross it probably might alleviate some of those pressures but i do remember it being a bit of a struggle um and i've always been a bit of an advocate for just steering away from the conventional fashion institutions anyway in the first place i think nowadays with the internet again people always say this but there are so many resources out there that exist pattern work pattern making workshops and you know programs that you can sign up to that you don't necessarily need to go down the you know convoluted way of into uh, you know enrolling into a fashion school going through that rigmarole and having your kind of confidence and your ability and your creativity stripped in order for you to kind of learn how to run a business and the only way to run a business is guess what just run a actual fashion business and it, it takes away from the fetishization as well about you know of interning for a brand which i never really understood especially when for the most part you're interning for a brand and you're having to fetch people coffees you know necessarily doing the work so if if this um sparks that change and if we're kind of living in a moment where kids instead of going to instead of getting themselves in a hundred thousand pounds worth of debt to go to UAL or instead using that money to start their own brands using that money to maybe go in because I'd, I'd, I'd agree if you went to go you know if you decide to start a brand up for a year launch it it didn't work out and then take the next six months to go and work for free for somebody like actually pay them to help you to let them work alongside them right um in a really entry level position way below your actual skill level so they can just learn how the business operates and then go back to business that'd be awesome but doing it within the prism of working in a university it's just a little bit it's a little bit naive it's a little bit infantile right it's a little bit amateurish you need to actually go out there and make the thing work and again um i think the industry as well will be best served by having loads of um fashion creatives who've actually done the work in the field who've sold bags to actual real people so that when those spots or those opportunities do rise up in you know the big luxury houses you've got people that are prepared to do the work and kind of step into that platform because that's the thing that you don't want right you don't want some kid from a university who has got no experience of what actual real women want who's just kind of designing everything in theory trying to then decide how to design a bag for armani that's going to sell in you know a thousand different places you want someone that's actually got some kind of a level of commercial minded thinking in that regard i would hope so i don't know it continues here it says is it more yep last bit it says the infrastructure of companies too he said must urgently change so that black people are employed at c-suite level i definitely agree with that black people need to be hired for their intellect and credentials not as a marketing tool 100 percent agree with that only when all business decisions got made by a fully representative board of directors without deep rooted systemic prejudice can fashion be moved forward there's still a long way to go but ross an inspiring group of change group changes are leading the way forward explore the 11 recipients split in the 25k below that's all them there in tech design and engineering fashion and retail arts and creation beauty and grooming food and catering that is so cool man 
well done to everybody involved there man really really amazing to see and again great work from sammy ross but we shouldn't be surprised on it next on list here before i go we've got a fear of god fundraising t-shirt um i guess some people in streetwear or you know some of the streetwear crew have got together to create um you know the classic sort of fundraising t-shirt motif where they sort of essentially splash all their logos on the back of it kind of co-signing um the fact that they're all kind of banded around this one cause and then obviously the money that's generated from the sales of t-shirts will probably be split um between several different charities so it's a very old tradition in streetwear one of the things that i love about the streetwear community that we're able to all kind of you know sometimes some of the brands that are together on a t-shirt that you might have some internal beefs there might be some things going on behind the scenes that you're not aware of but they put those things to the side and like you know what this is bigger than us let's kind of put that thing forward and f you i think a lot of the brand owners are aware that most of these kids that wear these shirts aren't going to give two fucks about the charities that they kind of contributing to but you know it doesn't matter as long as you're exposing them to it that's all you can do in it for your community and you've kind of done your part in that regard but this is um, from vogue as well it says fg is not gf fear of god's jerry lorenzo on george floyd and the importance of behind the scenes collaboration so this is a t-shirt there um it's a fear of god cut t-shirt i'm assuming um with the gf representing george floyd right on the front and you've got fear of god union noah off white funnily enough awake oh, john just done again then the other guy that was threatening to shoot people if <laughs> they came to his door um denim tears pyre moss and me so it says for his article it says jerry lorenzo first saw the video of george floyd murder at hands of the police officer he thought of his children and how important it is to teach them about racial justice systemic equality and the importance of inclusivity lorenzo who founded the streetwear label film god in 2012 then began to text his friends together with kirby jean raymond of pierre and Pyra Moss, sorry, uh, Brendan Babbage of, of Noah, Virgil Abloh of White, uh, Lorenzo discussed racism in America, their personal feelings around Floyd's killings and what they could do to help creatives. Lorenzo design director Lillian Delostro came up with the idea of switching the letters to FG to GF, which is genius really, isn't it? Considering, you know, they were just ready and praying for that. Um, you know, Floyd and printed a monogram on the front of the t-shirt. The Lorenzo asked his friends in the text chain, uh, if they'd like to participate as a group they decided to lend their logo as a sign of unity and to donate 100 percent of the proceeds from the sale of the shirt directly to the G gianni floyd fund set up for floyd's youngest daughter the shirt will be available on the fear god instagram channel for 100 pound beginning at 12 p.m et today amazing <sighs> that's a good thing i guess that's inspiring in that regard um it makes you wonder, in it, why Nicki minaj and his six nine thought it was uh, uh, a good decision to put it out there in a copy that they were going to donate a portion of the proceeds i'm not really a, f a fan of donation shaming but it's just funny when everyone is doing all the money and some people say now nah, i'm only going to do some like the amount of courage that must take because you know you're going to get killed you know people are going to actually destroy you in it in the comments but i guess you just don't care in that regard but bloody hell man what a funny little thing that was but hey that's cool i'm not sure sure is that still available now or is that all done i'm assuming it's probably all done in it get that off the screen so it's not loading let's continue with the article actually it says lorenzo points out he and his collaborators who also include chris gibbs of union the, the, the other names have always put inclusivity in the forefront of their brand he said i think it's a little easier for us to react because we have a history of empathy for the black community and a history of promoting inclusivity which is true isn't it? for the most part i think you feel like a lot of the kind of self-flagellation a lot of the kind of you know cries of i didn't know from some of the white people on social media it is a bit disingenuous because it makes you think like what the fuck is wrong with you like were well, you not aware that there was um of the struggles of other races going on out you know what well, are you just not aware of the struggles that people have out there it's just unbelievable isn't it? some of the things people are saying um and this kind of overcorrection and this sort of like kind of bending the knee and you know washing people's feet is because you feel guilty because you've not done anything right you've not kind of been aware of what's going on in the world you've not kind of been you know empathetic of any kind of, of anyone's struggle but if you're actually doing the work and you're just out there you know putting your best foot forward there's no need for you to kind of castrate yourself in public everyone kind of knows you've you know you've got your best intentions at heart um 
I find that very bizarre on social. But here, it continues. It says, um, when we do speak out, it's coming from an honest place and our consumers know and understand that. I think that what a lot of brands are facing during this tricky time is that if you haven't had a history of inclusivity and you begin to speak out, you run the risk of being reactive and in inauthentic. 100% agree. I think I saw a brand the other day make a really bad move in that regard where they usually, you know, they're probably a little bit they're probably for the most part forward facing have this image of you know the kind of ditzy white girl running through labrador grove and then suddenly it sort of like goes brown and black and then suddenly it goes back to the ditzy white girl running through labrador grove then they they haven't done no other political post they don't even post about christmas they don't do anything right and um, and then suddenly they um i guess they miss opportunity to post the blackout tuesday thing I guess I just missed it. The social media manager probably just didn't think it was a good idea. And then no one at the top of when to push it forward. They was afraid to. And then they were, they got called out for that. So in the reaction to it, they decided to then post a caption that supported Black Lives Matter. But the image was really white and they just got torn to pieces by it. And in my opinion, I don't think, I think the real work does happen behind the scene. But I think if you're a brand and you're forward facing and you're talking about social issues all the time, it's your responsibility to, kind of put your voice out there but if you don't talk about stuff you shouldn't have to you should put your money where your mouth is donate in the right places just keep it stepping or if you're not interested just don't get involved but you just can't do two things at the same time you have to pick what camp you're in if you're all in or you're all out yeah basically and if you're all in you have to choose whether you do it front facing or behind the scenes uh, da, da, da. It, go, it continues. He said he notes, however, that in his that in his view, there is no wrong or right way for a brand or anyone to implement or address the movement right now. I partly agree with that. It says I think it's really a hard thing. I think it starts with making sure that the company uh, that the companies that you have that you own have inclusivity built into the model, and that everyone in the company is considered that the products that are being made are considered. You have to think about how those things you make and how you put them into the world will be received across. Um, all demographics across all people for lorenzo the collaborations in private is just as important if you're more if you're not important so so it's kind of did you if for lorenzo collaborations in private is just as important if not more important than that we see on the surface be that on a piece of merch or on social media a lot of the collaborations we do is behind the scenes one of the things that Virgil has said in the past is that you would never be able to buy a t-shirt with the Louis Vuitton or Prada and Givenchy logos or printed on the same piece but we're part of a new generation that is breaking the old rules and establishing new ones and I think that we collaborate in ways that got unseen yeah that's true but I don't I don't I don't see the point in that statement really um those brands would never put their t logos on one t-shirt that is what it is but streetwear has done this thing for years, right? It's, been, it's done this thing for decades since the inception of streetwear. There was this kind of cross pollination of brands, sort of like you know, trying to reach other different in, different parts of the industry, different parts of an audience, joining together. You know, it's usually just a mark of friendship, a mark of love. People have been doing this forever. Um, it continues to that with this issue that affects us all. I thought it was important for the world to see that there was an idea that was created by a collective of people who are passionate about it, the people who shop with us and support us. Yeah, I guess so, but let's not heavily intellectualize putting a bunch of logos on a t-shirt, eh? Let's keep it a little bit chill. But again, regardless, it's a nice tee. I like it. Is it available still at the moment? Probably not. What does it say here? Can you buy the Staying Solidarity? The, 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 how much stock you'll have at five? I guess people are going to buy it. Okay. Yeah, you can buy it if you want. There it goes. All three of the t-shirts there with the logos on the back. Check it out if you're that way inclined. Anyway, I guess that's where we end it. That's the Action of the English Show, episode number 324. Thanks so much for tuning in, as per usual. If you want more information regarding myself, um, when it comes to all things I can see, now, please check out my website down below, actionofzinger.com. It should be in the show notes description. If you're watching via YouTube, smash that like button, hit subscribe. If you're listening via the podcast app, of course, give me a five-star review and share with your friends. And until then, I'll see you guys very, very soon. Peace, take care.